cloud and recording. Who else got their camera on? Anybody else got their camera on? Or is it just me? I do. Yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, if you guys can turn your cameras on and uh, say hello at least, and <clears throat> then uh, once we start, you can uh, feel free to either drop the, the camera or leave it on. Awesome. All right. So welcome, everyone. Today is Saturday. Uh, Saturday is with Eddie, December 17th. Uh, probably the last one of the year because of the holidays, right? Because of the holidays. Uh, this is something that will uh, continue uh, going on. It's, you know, it's always free. It is uh, not financial advice, right? It's for education purposes and essentially uh, geared towards people who are looking to do options trading. I am not a financial advisor. I am not licensed by anybody like FINRA or SEC or those kind of good people. Um, I don't even know Jer Jerome Powell. I just I just read about him in the news. <laughs> Not on fast names with him, market makers and all that. So whatever you learn today is, uh, you know, for education purposes, you need to double check, cross check, triple check all that information. Use it wisely. You can lose money because we're talking about options. Uh, we talk about strategies that can make you a lot of money very, very quickly. But you know that anything that can make you money very quickly can also uh, make you lose very, very quickly. So you need to be very, very uh, cognizant of that fact. Uh, I think that's all the disclaimers that I need at this time. Right? Cool. So welcome, everyone. Uh, again, this is free. Tell your friends, uh, you know, by all means, uh, if you like what you see, uh, be sure to subscribe so that you know uh, you, you get a notification when this video is posted. Uh, also, because it is free, you can forward the link. You can share the link uh, with your friends, your neighbors, uh, your boss. You know, just give him notice that you're you're, you're trying to quit. <laughs> you know, tell him, tell him. You know, I'm trying to get ahead and trying to fire you, man. You know, boss, and getting ready. And here's how this is this is my my betterment plan for this year. So if you if you don't you know do something about this, then. Uh, but anyhow, uh, welcome. So we have a few we have a few topics here, and you're welcome to add to those. So somebody wants to know about uh, somebody wants to talk about strategies to win. There are so many strategies out there, right? Uh, so which ones do you pick? Which ones do you, will actually help you? Um, and then we want to find out how do we get consistent? How do we get consistent? To me, consistency, by the way, means that you're doing both you're doing both win both things you're winning and you're losing but you're winning more than you're losing so is that a good strategy i think you should be winning more than you're losing so when you're losing it shouldn't destabilize you in fact it should it's it's healthy to actually you know kind of kind of not win right puts you on edge makes your head stay small otherwise uh, your head will get too big if if you win all the time but but we'll figure out what, what what does a loss mean and what does what's a, what what does a win look like? Uh, day versus swing trading. A lot of you are trying to do day trading. Well, you really, you should be trying to do swing trading. Now, what's the difference with that? How do we uh, how do we fix that? And then, uh, I think Lavita wants to know about the chats. She wants to know what a red candle means. <laughs> well, it's not as simple as that. What she really meant was uh, she wants to know when the direction changes, how do you know for sure, for sure that it has actually changed and that you can now do something? That's uh, that's what she's trying to figure out. And if I had the right answer for her, uh, I think I'd be you know, a millionaire 10 times over, but but we have, a, we have some ideas. Uh, somebody also wants to know about the red and yellow folders in forex.com. Anybody know about forex.com? Yeah. Brand new website. They came up with that one yesterday, last night. Uh, <laughs> so you might not have seen it. <laughs> well, maybe last week. I don't know. We'll talk about all those folders and see what they mean. And then Vaticos, one of my favorite. I like, I like talk about Vaticos. Vaticos because uh, uh, they're up and down, right? <laughs> You're selling something, buying something. You either have a guaranteed profit or not. Is, it, is there such a thing as guaranteed profit? Just, maybe not. 
but you have defined loss, defined profit. I think those are the words that uh, that are better to use. Defined profit, defined loss. Um, and then Lauren wants to know the next class. When is the next class starting January 9? It's going to be a Monday and Wednesday. So it's uh, Eastern time is uh, 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6 o'clock Eastern time. But I'll publish that on the website so that uh, pe more people know about it. And, uh, you know, some people have already, you know, locked in their uh, their spots. So that's that's good. So if you think about it, now's the time to do it. It's a nice Christmas present, by the way. So. All right. What happened to the market Thursday and Friday? Uh, okay, I don't know what happened on Thursday and Friday. Something happened in the market? Uh, let's now we've got to go look at the market and see what happened. Uh, I'm assuming Lauren made a lot of money and she wants to know why. Is, is that is that the reason, Lauren? There, so what's going on? Uh, she's not sure. All right, we'll come back. Right. Hey, Eddie, no, it <laughs> it was. I was in my sim and I was like, why is it dropping so much? It was like, I was afraid to take a trade. I was like, what is really going on? So let me, let me throw it back at you there, Lauren. When, when prices are going down, what, what do you do? What's the strategy that you use? Uh, how do you take advantage of, of such a thing? Well, you just do, you do uh, shorting or puts. Okay. All right. You can do shorting or puts. So shorting is where you're selling high, buying back low when it reaches the bottom, right? Right. Or puts is where you're buying a contract. Your thesis being that the price of the underlying is going to go down. And when it does go down, then once it reaches your profit target, you take it out. So yeah. talk to me. What, what, uh, which, well, which, I was, which, which part I was, was confusing? just expecting different, uh, 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 a different outcome because of those announcements that were made when yeah. it went on Tuesday. And, uh, you know, the, the, the consumer price thing that was, that was announced as well. Mm -hmm. And, but it just looked like every, everything, you know, I just wasn't expecting it. I'll put it that way. And okay. I did, you know, I had set up some trades, but <laughs> Everything went the opposite way of what I of how I thought they would go. I just didn't. I thought it would, you know, it would start up in the morning and then fall after, you know, an hour. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that's actually a good starting point. I like I like that question there, Lauren. So you had a thesis, but uh, you did not have complete information about. Uh, let me see. Hopefully, um, sharing my think of swim. Yeah. So you, you had some information, but not everything. You needed more information in order to build your thesis and stick and stick with it, right? Right. So when the when the when prices were falling, you you were surprised. Which stock in particular or which security were you looking at that that gave you pause? I was looking at uh, uh let me think. Spy was one of them. Spy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Nvidia. Yep. And uh, CRM, I think, as well. <clears throat> Got it. So she was. Um, I'm gonna just add them to the list over here so that we can talk uh, through them. Uh, just see them. Nvidia and CRM. Is that what you said? Yes. CRM and NVIDIA. So yeah, they did go down and SPY. And so, SPY, all of them did. On Friday, they were like tanking. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, oh my, I just wasn't expecting that, Yeah. you know? <laughs> so I guess, you know, I guess I need to know. I mean, I don't know. I just felt so confused after I, you know, I looked through, I tried to chart the highs and the lows. I tried to, you know, do it systematically but uh <laughs> i was like wow this is real weird you know got it so i'm 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 picking up quite a few things here from the conversation here is that uh, you have a plan you you kind of have a plan but that plan is not helping you right now it's not working right 
And you also don't know what you're looking for. When you see it, you don't know what you're looking at. That's that's probably a good <laughs> a good analogy. Yeah. I mean, all this time you've been looking at the candles, you just didn't understand what they were doing. And so your plan was not very solid. So we need we need to fix that, right? Yeah. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna we're gonna help you give you some tips on how you can fix some of these things, give you some confidence, uh, get you on the right path, look for the right things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh other than the charts, do you look at anything else, Lauren? Yes, what I look, look at, at the 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 market momentum for the day. Um, mm -hmm. Like on Think or Swim, there's a, you know, they have all of the indices. Mm -hmm. You know, they have them there. I look at CNBC in the morning. Yeah, I look at the pre markets. I look at the fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at. I mean, I'm like, I'm looking at the charts. You know, just to see to try to see what's going on. The problem may be, you know, that you need to look at it for a certain amount of time before you can determine a, a real direction, especially that 15 minute chart. And I've just noticed that the 15 minute does indicate what's going on, mm -hmm. but some of them, some of the things were just moving so sideways, you know, I Go couldn't ahead. get a fix on it, you know? So one more thing here, Lauren, uh, your average trade, how long are you in your average trade? Um, well, the ones that I've been doing in my SIM, uh, some of them I'm in and out because I, I feel like it's going, it's going bad. Yeah. So I just get in it and I'm, I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to lose all this money. So I'm going to get out. Okay. Some of them, um, I've been able to stay in like these this week, the ones in my SIM, I just stayed in it just to see what was going to happen. And it was tanking and it, it just, it just went all the way South, you know? Got yeah. Got it. So, so you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're inside of a trade more than likely your day trader, you get in the morning or sometime in the morning and you're out the same day. Right. Right. Okay. Right. You know, I've I had some luck like maybe a couple of weeks ago, yeah. uh, where you know I I figured it right. I looked at the chart, I was confident, I felt good, gained the money and got out, and it it worked. But you know, yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna change all of that because you you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall. Okay. Right, we're gonna stop all of that. Uh, we're gonna look for good consistent trades what's uh we're going to start with some basics like uh, are you looking for fifty dollars a hundred dollars five hundred dollars what are you looking for when you when you enter a trade what are you looking for how much money I, are you looking for i would like to do at least 500 okay you know three three to five hundred i'll put it that way three to five hundred so we're going to define what a five hundred dollar trade looks like and what it takes to get in into, into such a trade with confidence. And because uh, I don't think you're a day trader, you're, you're, a, you're an, in, an intentional day trader. Right? Right. right right now, you're just trading based on fear. Yeah. You're going in fearfully. You're hoping that you're going to get three to 500 bucks. And when you see it, you take it. And when you don't get it, you are out of there. Right. And then tomorrow morning, you're going to look at that trade and say that I, if I had stayed in, I'd be up $1,000. Right. Sounds familiar? <laughs> yep. That's most of you. That's that's a, that's you plus one million other people. So swing trades are what I suggest that we focus on until you, you're confident with that for a longer time. And for those who are listening for the very, very first time, the difference between a day trader and a swing trader is that a day trader gets into the trade uh, sometime during the day and the intention is not to overnight that trade, meaning that they're going to close that position same day. That's a day trader. Right? A swing trader may do the same thing, but their intention is to stay in the trade more than more than the day. Uh, so far, so good, Lauren. Is that, is that the understanding? It's clear yes, on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and and in order to do it intentional, we need to do maybe two or three trades every week so that if our goal is about $500 on every trade, then uh, we're looking for that thousand, uh, you know, 
to $2,000 every week. That's what I call consistency. When you can get your target amount every trade or most trades, I should say, uh, on a regular basis, whether it's two times a week or three times a week, because if you're doing $500 per trade two times a week, it's $1,000. Is that, is that about is that right there, Lauren? Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Okay. And so you know how to make 500 bucks, right? When's the last time you made 500? It's been about two weeks ago. And um, when's the last time you made 500 back to back? No, I haven't done that. <laughs> okay. We, so so we, we need to figure out how to do that back to back, back to back, back to back, right? Right. So using options, you can do that easily using options. And since you're trading the right things over here, I mean, you're talking about NVIDIA, CRM, uh, even SPY. SPY can pay you $500, you know, every couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. So so first off, what you need to do is because I had you say momentum. So I'm answering several questions here, in, in, you know, at the same time from other people. Momentum. Uh, because you're not a day trader, you don't you don't need to be looking at the market at 9.30 in the morning. Let's first get that out of the way. Okay. Right? What are you going to do at 9.30 in the morning? Once you figure out, once you study the ES and the futures and CNBC, what, what are you going to do? Um, How do you use that information is a question. I usually uh, determine... I, I decide which which way I'm going. If I'm going to go up, mm -hmm. you know, do a put or a, a call. Okay. So because we're not a day trader, then uh, we're going to stop trying to trade like a day trader. Okay. Roll out of bed about 10, 10, 15. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Stop, stop rolling out of bed about 8.30. Okay. <laughs> Roll out of bed. Yeah, that's too early. A little less stressful, <laughs> I would say, because it's like I, you know, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, okay, I gotta look at this, gotta look at that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I bet, yeah, I bet you get off confused. Sometimes you beginning. wake up, you jump out, you miss the floor, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start rolling out of bed about ten fifteen. By that time, market direction will have been set. What do you think? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you now? What do you think? I think so because. Yeah. I know that in the morning mm -hmm, it can mm -hmm. change two times. You know what I mean? If you if you get on there at nine thirty, you hear that bell. You're yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. It can go up for for a good ten minutes, and then you know you put in your trade, and then in fifteen minutes it's going the other way. It's going the other way, right? So, uh, and that's just the point exactly here because the direction has not been clearly set. Sometimes it hasn't been clearly set. Uh, right at the you know right at the bell so we need to stop trading that moment okay okay mm -hmm. and you're doing you're doing options so you know that the premium prices are a little excessive at that time right right if, mm -hmm. are you familiar with that phenomenon where you buy a contract and you know price moves uh, one direction goes the other way comes back and you look at your premium price it's it's not even where it was 10 minutes ago Right, right. That's so, exactly what's happening. Yes. That's one of the reasons you don't need to be trading at 9.30, Okay. We're, we're going to stop all of that. We're going to be trading around 10.30 o'clock, right? So I'm, I'm pretty sure some people are asking, but wouldn't I have missed the whole movement? More than likely, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? But what, will you, what else will you have missed? You will have missed paying premium prices. In other words, uh, your contract might be valued. I'm going to be, bring up here maybe NVIDIA. I'm going to go to the options chain here. Let's go with six days. Maybe you paid, actually, I'm not going to go six days. I'm going to go 30. How about we go 40, 41 days? Okay. Uh, maybe your premium, you pay $12 in the morning, but uh, at 10 o'clock, that same premium is, is trading at about $10. Uh, just because the volatility has shrunk, is that oh. is that a, is that a familiar phenomena? Yes. Yeah. So why why pay two hundred dollars? Why pay two dollars more for it in the morning? Two two dollars, by the way, is how much in real money? Two dollars premium. Two, two dollars. Uh, it'll be like two hundred. Exactly. Not mm. like two hundred. It is two hundred. Yes. Two hundred. Yeah. 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 So what was was that two hundred that could have been your profit maybe? 
Yes. Okay. All right. You get my drift. So the plan here is we're not going to straight at 9.30. We don't even care what the markets did overnight. Stop looking at that. You're not a day trader. Instead, you're going to roll out of bed about 10.15. That's when you start looking at the market. Okay. By that time, the direction will have been set. Okay. Not set in stone, but you will have a better indication or a better idea about where your price is moving. Okay. Uh, then you will use your daily charts. So remember, we plot on the daily, yes? Yes. So we plot on the daily and we trade maybe on the 15, if that. Okay. So the reason that we plot on the daily is because we are projecting at least a few days, a few weeks out, if possible. Okay. And we've got some history that we can depend on because we don't have a crystal ball to tell us just because we have, you know, four red candles in a row and we have a gap there, it's time to turn around or, you know, we've got a support area somewhere down there. That's where we're heading. But let's say we were right, right? And we only need to be right about 70% of the time. But let's say we were right. And we draw a thesis here of, uh, our, say we you know, we think that price is going to move from 167 to where it is, and it is going to be heading over to the uh, uh, over to that support area of 156, right? That's about uh, 10 points, give or take. Yeah. How would you take advantage of that 10 points? Do you know how much money is inside of that 10 points? Okay, the 10 points will be a thousand dollars. Wait a minute. Yeah, $1,000. About $1,000. So uh, maybe more like 500 bucks. What do you think? Uh, you, are you familiar with Delta? Yeah, the Delta. You, so if, yeah. Okay, so, so 500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're buying at the money, meaning that uh, you're choosing a Delta of 50, give or take, you're buying a put, then your projection here is about 500 bucks. Okay. And do you care that once you get in after the price has stabilized, I'm going to go to the 15 minute here just, just so that we can understand what's happening. There's going to be some up and down here. Your thesis shouldn't be to make money in these ups and downs. Your thesis should be in that longer term projection. How much longer term? We're talking 45 days because we're looking at the 27 January expiration. Okay. Your thesis is that by January 27, if I look at the chart one more time on the daily time frame, your thesis is that you have enough time to hit 156. Now that's 41 days. Do we seriously think that it's going to take 41 days to get that 10 points? No, but you're you're using that time frame because mm -hmm. it um, you're you're uh, building in your 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 loss possibilities. In yeah. other words, you're giving yourself plenty of time so that everything doesn't decay. It's called managing risk. Okay. You're managing your risk. You're saying that the potentially we could go even 170 before we head back down to 156. But in that 41 days, your thesis is that we're going to drop in price from 165 to 156, collect that uh, uh, five points and make that 500, uh, make that 500 bucks, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So so you can see already that you have a much lesser stress level because when you got into the trade, uh, and by the way, once once the direction is set, then you you want to do it on the 15 minute just to just to confirm, just to see that yeah, we are going down, that's what we're doing. The long-term projection is downwards. That's your thesis. Right. Does it mean that you're always going to be right? No. And that's why we have a stop loss. And we're going to talk about what a stop loss is all about here in a minute. But okay. but but you've entered a longer term trade. It's 41 days. You don't plan to be in there 41 days. In fact, this kind of trade is going to mature maybe, maybe in one day. I mean, heck, this thing has got an ATR of eight. Is that okay. right? Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, and so if it is true to its word, it it could be that it would take us a couple of days to move that 10 points. Right. That's the kind of thinking you need to be applying. And now if you can successfully do this, you know, this this you know, two trades every week, because this is this is one trade that's going to give you 500. Right. Uh, yeah. We haven't we haven't talked an A plus trade. This is not an this is not exactly an A plus trade, but 
but it, but it's it's a good trade. There, there's, there is such a thing as an A plus trade that we talk about in options with Eddie, but this is a trade that can give you that 500 bucks. And you need maybe like two of these uh, every week. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so which, I mean, when do you know that it's actually like moving down? Do, because it's going to move down, it might move up. You know what I'm saying? If it's, if it's yeah. at once, say it goes up to 170 mm -hmm. and then it comes down to 165. Yeah. You know, but then it goes back up. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? It could go back up, right? It could, it could, and it will, right? It's not, okay. it's not okay. an if, it, it is when. So okay. let's first understand that uh, you're not holding the crystal ball. You're not saying that your thesis has to work exactly the way you, you theorize it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we know that on its way down, it's going to bounce up and forth. That's why we, I didn't call this an A plus trade because it's, it doesn't fit the characteristics of a of you know that trade that is that has a higher probability of success. Mm -hmm. And so the stop loss that I said that we're going to talk about, if we are wrong, if we're dead wrong in the water about this trade and we bought a put, if it reaches 170, which was the high of the last candle, would that be can we say that that's wrong? That we're dead wrong on that one? No. Let's think about that for a second. With our thesis that we're going down, if uh -huh. price instead goes up and hits that 170 level, you don't think we're wrong? It could be wrong, is it? Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, it could be wrong, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it could be wrong, then uh, we don't want to find out at 180 that we're dead wrong. Right. <laughs> so so what I'm saying here is that your thesis needs to include that possibility that the trade could turn around and start going up instead of down. Okay. So because we know that 170 is a clear signal to us that we are, we are, we are, we are no longer correct, our thesis is not holding because we've broken that 170 level, well, how much dollars would we have lost between 165 and 170? Let's do the math here. Okay, one sixty-five to one seventy. That's mm -hmm. like five hundred dollars. But no, if... no, no, that's like five points. So in premium, if you bought at the money, that would be two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, okay, okay. You, are you familiar with that calculation? Let's think uh, through it. Let's 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 think uh, very very carefully through it. One sixty-five. You bought your contract when the price of the underlying was 165, price has instead now gone the opposite direction to 170. So $5 have gone in the opposite direction, yes? Right. That's the underlying, the price of the underlying. Well, how much in premium have you lost at that point if price has moved $5 against you? Okay, the premium then would be, would be uh, I don't know. We bought at the money. So your delta was 50. We're going to assume that the delta was 50. Okay, delta it is 50. 50 you bought mm -hmm. at the money, which would be what, the one, the 165? Well, we can call it uh, 160. So this would be a put. And usually when we're buying a put, we want to get a strike greater than the price of the underlying. So the 170 is probably where I would go for, even the 160, 750. It's not difficult to say. I, I avoid those that have the decimal points. But okay. if you but if you did put the 167.50, it's still valid. Uh okay. let, let's okay. go with the delta 50 for easy calculation. In five dollars movement of the underlying, how much will that premium have changed? Okay, that would be the two dollars and fifty cents. Would that be a good stop loss? I would say, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think uh -huh. so. What I'm trying to get you to think about is when do you know that you're wrong? Instead of picking an arbitrary number, like I'm going to risk $100. I'm going to risk $200, right? At which uh -huh. point do you know that you're wrong? So your thesis should be that maybe at 170, when I pass this candle here, the top of that candle, it's not working for me. This is not right. Yeah, it should be going the other way. Now it's going instead of you know upwards. So 
how much does that represent in terms of risk? $2.50 in premium. So my thesis would, because I'm trying to get 500 on this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I shouldn't be losing more than even half of what I'm trying to get. Okay. That would actually be a two to one. If my potential reward is 500, then my risk, even if it were just a two to one, would be 250. Right. Okay. See, yeah. see how you think through that uh, scenario to decide how, what your trade is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. that's called a trading plan for that trade for that position. So okay. every, every every trade that you get into is going to have its own trading plan. You're going to have a master trading plan that that's got your bigger set of rules and uh, and uh, you know all of that good stuff. Right. And then for each trade, every trade is a mission. We have to trade as though, you know, this mission, this is this is the only mission. It's got to succeed, you know, can't fail. But in the event it doesn't work out, what how do we mitigate it? How do we risk uh, manage it? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. so roll out of bed again, roll out of bed about 10, 15, watch the mic, see what it's doing, drop down in the 15 minute time frame and see, yep, yeah, it's going down. I'm buying a put, try and buy it you know, up there. Uh, and that's your thesis, put in your stop loss and say that if it hits 170, I am wrong. I don't need to be in this business uh, of this trade. Just just get out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because okay. if it hits that 170, guess what? It's going to, for this gap on the 15 minute, you can see that. And I don't trade NVIDIA a lot, but I can see that. And anytime I see a, a gap, I know that there is an event there that could, potentially cause us to want to fill that gap mm -hmm. yeah yep yeah all right yep. so 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 there's your plan and then once you have a take profit and a stop loss uh you can go back to gardening or something L lauren what do you do you like gardening what do i do huh yeah you like gardening <laughs> yeah or something or driving <laughs> or golf something whatever right yeah <laughs> Yeah, you go, yeah, you go do something you like. Don't be at the computer all day long. You're gonna get out of this trade prematurely. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. I think Got I think it. I've answered a lot of questions in in that question. So thanks, thanks for your question there, Lauren. Did did I leave anything out there? Anybody else has anything to add? Let me look at the chat to see what's happening. That's a perfect explanation for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome. You're welcome. That was, that was amazing. That awesome. teaching was amazing. I think uh, just just talking through it is 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 what most of us need to evaluate a trade, a position, and decide. You know why why am I risking three hundred dollars on a possible five hundred dollar reward? Uh, you know, if you decide that your minimum reward is two to one or three to one, then you shouldn't be risking more than that. And then how do you decide, in fact, how or where the, port, uh, the, the point is to risk? So for me, if I was trading this NVIDIA uh, thing, I would, uh, that's why I would be looking. And again, I, I'm always going to the daily chart because that's the longer vision. That's a longer term vision. I'd be looking at the 15 or less if I was a day trader, right? But, you know, it sounds like she is, uh, a swing trader, that's her intention. Uh, but she's getting out of trades prematurely. She's seeing $100 and then it turns into $90 and she's out of there. Well, the potential was the full 500. Now, we didn't go into what a great or you know a greater trade or A plus trade is because there are other strategies that she could be employing to make this even better. But from a rudimentary perspective, even with just a basic plan, you're just off the street, you don't know what you're doing, but you have some basic principles, this will help you, right? Uh, and, and she could benefit even from additional instruction for how do we make this even better? Is this even a good trade? Yeah, it can make you 500 bucks, but is it a good trade? Is it, a, is it an A plus trade? So um, in my class, we will take trades. We will only take the trades that are, that are giving us they have a higher probability of success. Let's put it that way. That's what we're looking for, a higher probability of success. And that's what you want. So, uh, let's see. Any other comments or questions or follow-ups on that? 
let's see, that was actually good because I could see myself uh, being stuck. Uh, okay, Toki says that she's uh, she's unable to get away from her computer at 9.30. Uh, Lauren says, sign me up. Go to options with Eddie and sign up. Yeah, I'll go add you to my class. We've got space. Let's see what else. Okay, let's explain verticals now. So verticals, uh, Patrice, uh, let me put you on the spot. What do you know about verticals? Tell me about them. Talk to me. Let's start from what, what you know. So I know that verticals are when you buy a call and mm -hmm. sell a call. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just confused as to are you supposed to buy low and mm -hmm. sell high or mm -hmm. does that vary? That's, okay. I'm confused about that. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great. So when we talk about verticals, uh, there are many flavors of verticals. There are those that you can sell and there are those that you can buy. Right. Most people are actually, I don't want to say most people. I say a lot of people are selling vertical spreads. Let, let me call them by their full name vertical credit spreads. There's two flavors there's vertical credit spreads and there's uh, vertical debit spreads. And then you break it down into a call credit spread, put credit spread, call debit spread, put debit spread. All of them have the word spread. They all have the same two words, either call or put. But the distinguishing factor here is the debit or the credit. So let's talk about credit spreads. I think those are the ones that you're familiar with. Uh, and just to confirm, when you, when you sell your spreads, Patrice, you're collecting premium. Is that right? I believe so. You believe so? Yes, I you, I think I know so based on what I think, where I think you're coming from, which class you're coming from, I think you're selling spreads. So let me help, help me answer the question. When you sell something and you have to buy it back, how would you make money, Patrice? Would you sell it? Would you buy it back higher than you bought it, you sold it for or lower than you sold it for? Let's put some numbers to it, right? Mm -hmm. So you sold something for $1,000. You sold something for $1,000. And uh, in order to make money on it, you have to either buy it back or let that thing expire so that you don't have to buy it back. You with me so far on that, uh, Patrice? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So are you going to sell it for, buy it back for $1,500 or are you going to buy it back for $200? Which, which one of the two are you going to do? So I'm selling it for selling it at a thousand. Yeah, you sold uh, something you do not own. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that you sold, part. I don't yeah, own it. Yeah, you don't own it. Let's be clear. From the get go, you don't own it. You sold. You borrowed something and you sold it. Right. You came to me. You got some stock, some shares, something, some options, and you turn around. You sold it to. You sold it to Mary. Mary likes to buy. She likes shopping. You sold it to Mary Bostick. And uh, now you have to go buy something to, you know, to replace what you sold. Mary, I'm putting you on the spot as well there. <laughs> so how do you, how will you make money? Tell me. I would you think got... by the 1500 But then, yeah. Okay. Okay. I would think yeah. by the 1500 because it, it, the difference. I would yeah. make money from the difference. So you sell it for 1000 buy it back for 1500 That's how you make the money. Yeah, I would think. Mm. No? <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, help me out. <laughs> well, now I want you to help me out. Uh, borrow something from me. Right. <laughs> it's worth $1,000 at the moment. Right. You go sell it for $1,000. Let's, in fact, let's give it a real life scenario, okay? Have you ever heard of drop shipping? You've heard of drop shipping. A lot, a lot of people have heard of drop shipping, right? So let's say you own an online e-commerce website and you sell jewelry and perfumes, right? Right. And somebody comes to your shop, your online mm -hmm. store, and buys a piece of jewelry mm -hmm. for a thousand dollars, but you you don't even have any jewelry at your house. Oh God! Yeah. 
but mm. you sell it to them for a thousand dollars. Right. Now you have to go look for somebody who actually owns jewelry, maybe the mining company or some dealership, some warehouse. Are you going to buy it for a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, or two hundred dollars? Two hundred. Uh, <laughs> I had to see it. Okay, two hundred. Yeah, because so you, I mean, I, I sold it to you, but I don't want to spend, you know, more than you money. sold it. Exactly, right? exactly. Right. So that scenario, you sold high, you bought back low. Oh, okay. High was equal to one thousand. Right. Low was two hundred, or anything lower than one thousand. Right. Is is low. So you're selling right. high, buying low. Yeah. That's a credit spread. You're mm. collecting the money up front. Right. Let me give you let me give you another scenario. What if you sold that same piece of jewelry for one thousand dollars? You go over to the warehouse you normally buy it from, and they tell you, dude, man, we don't even know what to do. We're going out of business. Uh, do you want the jewelry? You can keep it. You don't have to pay us. How much is your profit now? Well, if I bought it for a thousand and you, you sold said, it, I sold it, sorry, sold mm -hmm. it for a thousand mm -hmm. and I went back to the warehouse mm -hmm. and I get it. Uh, I don't have to pay them anything. Yeah. They tell you, dude, man, we are a business. We just, just keep it. Oh, well then I made everything. Exactly. So yeah. it expired. What? Worthless, right? Yeah. You don't have to buy it back. Right, 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 right. So guess what? With vertical spreads, there is that situation where we sell stock, meaning we sell premium, and it has a date to expiration. And there are conditions about that particular security such that if it expires at a particular price, then you don't have to buy it back. But if you're not sure by the end of the expiration and you want to take the risk off the table, because the price could go over 1000 is, is that right? Yeah, it can. Yeah, so while well, you're over there dealing, darling, dancing about it, and the price is now dancing at around seven hundred bucks, what do you do? You buy it at seven hundred, and you make how much? Well, work with I'm... me here. Work with me here, Patrice. You sold it for <laughs> for thousand dollars. You buy right. it back for seven hundred. How much so, do you make? I I think I'm making three hundred. Three hundred dollars. Do you have a calculator? Do you got one of these? <laughs> Let me see. Let me show you. Do you see? Do you have one of these? <laughs> Yes. Patrice, do you have one of these? I do. Seven dollars Walmart. What? Yeah. Oh, five, maybe five bucks. You need one of those. Don't don't yeah. pass go. And then are you going out today after this class? You know. Tag, I have it target. on my phone. I have it on my phone. Target, target. No, no, no. Forget the one on your phone. Your phone is for calling people. <laughs> do people call you on your phone? I try not to have to go. <laughs> buy a calculator is this a hobby by the way yes it's a hobby yeah no it's not a hobby yes you're doing the you're trading as a hobby yeah okay <laughs> okay all right different scenario then for for um, all of those that uh not doing trading as a hobby you need to buy a calculator that. Mm -hmm. all right so that's that's what that's one part you can sell high and buy back low that's called a vertical credit spread and you can buy it in two scenarios so let's 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 put some numbers and uh, pictures around that okay imagine the price here is uh, well it is 38.52 and i'm going to draw a line here 38.52 that's the current price at the moment yeah and your thesis and uh, you know patrice you need to help me on this one your thesis is that price is going to continue to go downwards right Right. So when price is going down, there are so many strategies that we can use, you know, take advantage of to, you know, when price is going down, what's one of them? Any you know, that comes to mind? Price going down, they're shorting. Okay. So you can short. That means that you're, you're selling shares. You're selling something you don't have, right? Right. And you don't own. Okay. So you're shorting. That's one strategy. Um, what's, what's another one? Because puts are related more to depreciation so uh, puts yeah mm -hmm. you can i guess buyer scale puts you can you can buy a put yeah 
Yeah, you can buy a put when to take advantage of price going down. Right. Okay. Um, so far, those are the two that I, that come to mind. And so far, they're good. Uh, could you buy a call? Um. No, I would no, not. Wrong strategy because we buy the, calls when you're expecting price to go up. Right, when it's appreciating. So no, okay. I wouldn't do that. Let's flip that question. Could you sell a call? I would think, yes, you could sell a call. All right, we can sell a call. So that's another strategy that we can do that. Can you sell a call naked without owning anything of the underlying? Um, If you don't have the money, I don't think so. Uh, well, you are selling it, so you don't have to have the money. Oh, you don't have to? Okay. Well, then, yeah, you can sell a call. Sell a naked call. You can sell a naked call if you have the right privilege, right? Right. How many people have the right privilege in this call to sell a call naked? I just want to see in the chat. How many of you can sell anything naked today? I need a few more answers. Oh, wow. Not a I need a I few have... more answers. <laughs> I have the privilege, but I don't because I don't completely understand it. Yeah. How many, even if you had the privilege, would you sell anything naked? By the way, when we say naked, it's a, it's a technology term. We're not. Being, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so Patrice, are you watching the chat? I am. What is, what is the general feeling there? They said, absolutely not. I see mm. never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Yeah, not on my watch, right? I hear you. I hear you. So even if selling a call is a strategy that you can use, mm -hmm. unless your name is Patrice Bank NA, <laughs> right? I think, right. you know, unless your name is Patrice Bank and we don't know it, right. then, uh, then you can't sell a call naked. So ah. instead, what you have to do is you have to sell a call and you have to buy some insurance with it. Oh, wow. And that way you own something, you know, a part of the underlying so that you're able to sell a call. So how, how does that work, right? How does that work? Uh, right. Assuming that, uh, let's say we, we decide that uh, we're going to sell 3,900, okay? We're going to sell 3,900 strike. Right. Which one would we buy, the 3,895 or the 3,905? Assuming that we want a five-point widespread. So if you're saying buy, sell, so sorry, we're going to sell yeah, high, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. buy low. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a strike over here. The 3900 is the one that I'm going to sell. So I'm going to say sell. Okay. Right. That's the one that I'm going to sell. And I want you to walk with me here and tell me which one are you going to buy? The 3905 or the 3895? Uh, 30. The 39, the higher one? The higher one. So, you, you, you well, let me help you out here. You're mm -hmm. going to sell the 3905. So, I'm mm -hmm. giving you the rules for credit spread. Mm -hmm. The one that you sell is going to be closer to the current price. The current price at the moment is 3852. Mm -hmm. So, if I sold the 3900, then I would buy the 3905 as protection, meaning that the thesis here being that, let me first draw it out here. I'm going to buy 39.05. And don't do this on Monday, by the way. This is yeah. completely, uh, and I'm also going to switch over here to the 15 minutes just so that we can see these lines a little bit better, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's explain it. Principle number one, when we are selling verticals, there's, there, there's several principles. Uh, we, we, our thesis is that we think, we believe that price is not going to go up and above 3,900. We understand that point, yes? And that's why we sold the 3,900 strike because we think that price is going to remain below 3,900. And if it does, however much premium that we collected at that particular moment, we get to keep it. Yeah. I suppose you're shaking your yeah, just yeah. shake your head and say yes. <laughs> and if price goes above 3905, then uh or you know enters 3900, keeps going going up to 3905, we'll experience something called max loss. 
but our max loss is capped. It's capped by the width of the spread. So this is a 39 of 3900 to 3905. Mm -hmm. So width of the spread is the difference between those two numbers. Uh, you don't even need your Walmart calculator at this point. How much is that, uh, Patrice? Went up by five. Five. <laughs> so this one you can count on just one hand. Uh, five. That is how much money you need in margin to be able to execute this trade. And that's how much money the bank will hold, $5 in premium. We know that $1 in premium is $100 in real money. So you need $500 in your account. So right. the maximum that you can lose is 500. The maximum that you can gain is how much you sell it for. So remember, we're going to sell the 3,900 and buy the 3,905. Let's actually, let's go to the options chain here and just see how much that could possibly be. I'm going to go with December 19, which is the next expiration. So I'm saying here, and I'm going to increase this to about 30. I am going to sell, uh, this is a call credit spread. I'm going to sell these for $3. That's what I'm doing, right? And I'm going to buy the 3905, which is that one. So I'm going to collect 55 cents in credit. That's the maximum profit that I can get, regardless of how this thing moves up and down after the fact, $55 or 55 cents is how much that I stand to gain. The maximum loss would be the difference of what that thing is worth minus how much I uh, received. So $4.45, you with me so far? I am. I should know. I should know. I'm fairly new to this. That's why I'm. I'm still very yeah. confused. So, so last week, anyway, I had. I, I went through a whole class. I'm just going over the salient features of of a credit spread. But what I want to demonstrate here is that uh, you whatever premium that you receive from this trade is the maximum that you can possibly keep. In order to make money, you have to either let it expire worthless, meaning you get to keep that 55 cents or mm -hmm. $55 in real money or buy it back for less than that. And we'll, you know, again, when we're talking about good trades, is 55 cents a good trade? No, it's not, no, yeah. right? It's it's mm -hmm. not, uh, but, 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 but the example does work for us. Mm -hmm. Patrice, you need some, some, more education on the spreads because yeah, definitely. this is not something we can cover in 10 minutes and get you to go trading. So yeah. you need you need a whole lot more background. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way I'm going to answer your question is that you know you can you can buy and sell. You need to know which side you're buying, which side you're selling. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the relationship between the price and the spread. Yeah. You need to understand uh, the various principles of what you can or cannot do, mm. right? Like, can you sell naked? You know, that, that answer should be no, even right. though it's a possibility. That answer should be a flat out no without even thinking about it, without having to, you know, use up your your choice of, you know, call a neighbor or something like that, call a friend. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't have to use that, you know. Right. So I think I think you need a bit more instruction. So right. if you're open, I can teach you. Uh, I'm open. Trade. Yeah. So you know, not not here, obviously, but you, yeah. you need we need a bit more time than uh, than than this. Okay. I hear you. Thanks, Eddie. Sounds good. Yeah. So follow up questions on that. Anybody? All right. Okay. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, somebody was talking about. Uh, Holders, and let me know if I'm going too fast, too slow. I need to speed up. I need to up my game. What do I need to do here? <laughs> right. Let me bring up. Uh, let me bring up this chart here. So this is a uh, forexfactory.com, and uh, somebody had a question about. I think it was in chat. Somebody had a question. Let me go back and read it. Uh, can I explain? No. Can, can I please go over what red and yellow folders are and what they have to do with our trading strategy? Okay. So I think earlier on, one of the 
call us, you know, I think Lauren uh, did not have a lot of information. So this is part of the information that she might actually be able to use that, that she was not uh, taking advantage of. I'm going to start by clearing my filters here, remove all the filters so that we can see a few more things. And I'm going to go back to what, what day was Thursday? Thursday was the 15th. Is that right? Yeah, Thursday was the, I think Thursday was 15th. I've got a calendar right here in front of me. How about that? Yes. Okay, so Thursday was the 15th. And what was happening on the 15th? Uh, we had a bunch of red folders. We had a bunch of yellow folders and some orange. But what exactly is this that we're looking at? Why even go to Forex Factory? We're not trading Forex. What has it got to do with options trading? The answer, or one of the answers, is that there's a relationship between Forex trading or money, most spe more specifically the US dollar. So we understand that there's a relationship between ship, a relationship between the US dollar and stocks here in the US. So the US dollar is represented by USD. I was gonna say little known fact, but I, I don't know who I'm gonna be fooling today. <laughs> Let me see who I'm trying to fool here. I'm trying to fool Steven. Steven, USD is a United States dollar. <laughs> Walk with me here, Steven. He knows. <laughs> What's that? What's that? I'm talking about USD. <laughs> and I decided to, you know, to use your name over there as, you know, for the joke. So USD feel is what we feel free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we know that uh, that's what we are following. Do we care about uh, you know the French you know, franc or the Australian dollar or the Japanese yen, the the British pound? Do we care about those? Those are significant for those markets. They may be significant for U.S. markets, but the one that we're primarily concerned with is the USD, strong dollar, uh, low stocks, weak dollar, higher stocks. Yes. Anybody agree with that? No? That's the relationship. When we have a strong dollar, it means that we are suffering. It's good for us. We can send money abroad, pay more, I mean, pay less for the goods and services. But guess what? The people who are uh, trying to do business with us from the rest of the world, they are suffering when the dollar is very high. It is uh, the number one currency that most people peg their uh, economies on. So when we have a very, very strong dollar, it means that uh, our economy is not doing very well. Weak dollar, so that's that's the relationship. So we have to understand what events happening that affect the USD. Now, because I've got all of these, here's a tip, guys. Here's a tip. There's this uh, little thing called a filter over here. Can you all see that? Can you see my Forex factory? Anybody? Yeah. All right, you can see that. And I'm just going to push the filter icon and... I don't need to see all of these things, right? Here's a tip. I'm just going to click on none, and then I'm going to choose just USD. That's all I'm interested in. All these other, all these other, all these others do matter, but not for me, right? Apply filter. Now I can see just USD. Cut out the noise. That's what I'm saying. Cut out the noise with. You don't need to see all these other things. Just just be concerned. So let's look um, at at what this is, red folder, orange folder, yellow folder. When it's red, it means that there is a significant event that is going to affect the way that the Forex moves and by extension, the way the, uh, the economy or the, uh, the, the S&P or the Dow behave. You can get more information by clicking on this detail to see what the core sales month over month uh, is all about. So we can see that a change in the total value of sales. Um, actual greater than forecast is good for currency. Translation, just you know, replace the word currency with stocks. Can we do that? Actual greater than forecast is good for stocks. Every time you see the word currency, change that to stocks. Is it always true? No, not necessarily true. Because sometimes we want the number to actually go down, which is healthier for our economy. But then stocks will go up or will go down or something. It's going to happen. The opposite is going to happen. So you have to understand this, that not every time when it's supposed to be good for stocks, 
that it actually works out good for stocks. Uh, a good, a really good example here would have been uh, the core CPI. I'm going to see, go back to this one. So let's take a look at that. The forecast was 0 0.3. It came in actual at 0 0.1. It says that actual greater than forecast is good for replace the word currency with stock. That that's that's our that's our thesis, right? Was it actually good for stocks? Well, the answer is no, because we were forecasting 0 0.3, it came back at 0 0.1. Is that greater or is that lower? Less. That's less, right? But but what actually happened? Stocks went up. So that's a great example where greater is not actually good for stocks. It depends on the the, the, the expectation of what uh, traders are thinking. Here, CPI, why, the reason why this did not happen, why uh, the market did not tank because of a lower, uh, lower reading is because this translated other things in macroeconomics, this translated to, well, the Fed is looking at this number and if, they, if it actually comes at, even at 0 0.3, it means that the rates they're going to increase by 0.75 basis points. That's a whole talk this last six months. If it came lower, then it means that, oh, you know what? We don't, we don't need to raise it to 0.75. We can just go with 0.5 or even less. So that is why greater than forecast is not necessarily good for stocks. So you have to understand that. So to answer your question, whoever asked that, um, you, you, need, you also need a little bit more information about these macroeconomic events. These are macroeconomic, macro meaning that they are data that is that is accumulated, collected, processed, uh, analyzed on the macro scale, you know, on a not, not necessarily a global scale, but but on an American scale, on the US scale. So the CPI things to be concerned about, there is a now, FOMC meeting, uh, meet, FOMC statements and meetings and that kind of things and the rates. Uh, so, your question also requires more in depth, uh, more than just ten minutes of of answering the question. So that is something I would like to maybe even go over in class and see how do we interpret these more, not necessarily accurately, but with a greater understanding. Sound good? Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, use that little trick over there to go to 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 understand uh, how things are going. So today is seventeenth. Nothing's happening. You can see Monday. Uh, Monday, uh, nothing happening. Just the housing market index. You have to read more to understand how that is going to be playing a role. In general. Yellow folders don't cause wide price swings. Red folders will usually cause a wide, uh, uh, a wide swing. So if I look at uh, the S&P here and I'm going to roll to, let's see the one minute. Uh, then we can see something like this. This is uh, Friday, yeah. So Friday, we had some events. Uh, or was it Thursday? Both Thursday and Friday. Actually, all this week, we've had some events. But you can see this: the swings are really wide. And when when we have activity like that, that is, that's when you see that. Uh, but when there are yellow folders, usually it's kind of ranging normally. So, OK. Let's see what else we can answer here. <clears throat> All right, uh, Jacqueline wanted to know about uh, strategies to win. So I'm gonna put you on the spot, Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline, what, what, what kind of strategies are you using right now? You would do this, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wasn't well, expecting this. <laughs> well, uh, I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. You know, yeah. I appreciate all you do. 
Uh, okay, so let me just pick one, right? Sure. Uh, well, you already went over verticals. Um, mm -hmm. um, you did singles, right? Uh, um, yep. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let's see here. Which one am I playing with now that I'm trying to learn? Um, Iron Condor, Straddle, um, Strangle. Mm -hmm. uh, those different types of strategies. So just yeah, basically I've, been playing with. I'm not well versed on it, so let me put that out there right now. Got it. <laughs> so you've done strandos and condos and strangos. Straddles. Straddles, okay. You know the difference between a straddle and a strangle? Uh, str uh, strangle? I'm not well versed on it. I said okay. I'm just playing with them. Got it. Uh, and the reason you're trying to do this is so that you can uh, have an edge or you can have additional strategies to work with when something else is not working. Is that, is that right? That is correct. Okay. All right. So I take it that you're pretty well versed with calls and puts. Yes, calls and puts, I'm fine. Okay. You're familiar with uh, credit spreads. Um, I'm fine with credit spreads. Um, mm -hmm. I don't sell. I just buy. Um, so you're you're doing. Spread. So that's a credit spread. Uh, but I mean, not a. Yeah. You, debit spread. So debit there's debit spread, spreads. Right. So so you're doing debit spreads. Um, you prefer debit spreads to credit spreads. Correct. And I love this man. I love this Jacqueline. That that's the right way to go. Yeah. Definitely the right way to go. Uh, I also prefer debit spreads to credit spreads, and there's a use case for each of them. So you're on the right track over there, and calls and puts. So let, let's break it down based on what you just told us. You you've broken down some very very basic strategies that almost everybody should know. Actually, not almost. But let's calls and puts. Everybody should be familiar with calls and puts. The reason is when you're talking about options or when you're trading options, there's actually going to be a call or there's going to be a put, one of those. You have to understand the semantics, the fundamentals, everything that there is to know about calls and puts, how to make money, how to lose money, how to protect yourself, everything. So those that I call that one strategy, calls and puts, I call that one strategy because the calls Obviously, you're taking advantage when price is going up, puts when price is going down, that's when you're doing the puts. So one of those, one or the other is what you're going to be employing. Everybody with me on that so far? If you don't fully understand calls and puts, if you don't fully understand how you can put a trading plan for a particular position and say, this is how I am going to make money on this strategy, you don't need to learn any other strategy. Um, let me see in the chat who opens a business without an idea of how they're going to be making money. Crickets. Yeah. This is a business. So you have to have an idea of how you're going to make money. <laughs> Elon. <laughs> uh, yeah. True. True. Uh, I like I like I like Dora's answer. Yeah, she is forty four billion dollars, and I'm uh, not doing this to make money. I'm doing this for free speech, which is no longer free. Uh, you need to pay to be blue, something like that. <laughs> yeah, most people, I think most people, everybody, I think who decides to open a business or run a business, they probably, the 99.999% have an idea about how they're going to be making money, right? So they know what their inputs are. They know what their outputs are. They've thought through it. They've decided, here's the price point. Here's my cost of doing business, cost of goods sold, all of that good stuff. And so when I sell these or provide this service, Whatever is left is the difference between how much I spent and how much I received, um, and and hopefully that's greater, right? If I receive less than I spent, 
I'm going at a loss. If I receive more than I spent to make that widget, to provide that service, then I've, you know, I'm making money. That's the goal. That's the business plan. You need a business plan for calls and puts. It, it cannot be just, you know what, I'm just going to buy a call because I think price is going up and I'm just going to wait. Uh, and you're going to be lucky a few times, more than a few times. No, it cannot be coincidental. It has to be intentional. Right? It has to be intentional. And, and I have a very, very strategic um, I have a very strategic uh, options trading plan for calls and puts that my students use very successfully. You miss one of those steps, you're signing up for failure, right? It works. So we need that. Calls and puts are going to be one of your strategies that you're going to use, Jacqueline. So continue with that. Uh, debit spreads, I highly encourage. Yes, that is great. Uh, what she's doing here, she's buying low, selling high. She's still doing verticals. She's buying low, selling high. Uh, defined profit, defined loss. Very, very nice way of building an account. Is that right, Jacqueline? Yeah. She just has to wait. There's there's this yeah. plus and minus, but but it's a it's a really nice way of managing risk. So I can already tell, you know, this is one smart lady who wants to manage how much money she's she's uh, you know throwing around trying to get more. Uh, by doing debit spreads. So smart, smart move. Iron condos, uh, not so much. So an iron condo by definition is basically a PCS and a CCS. You're selling on both sides of the fence. So if you have a strategy that is going to take advantage of prices uh, going sideways, and I'm going to drop over here down to the 15 minute assuming that you don't know what's going to happen. Let's say the, this is, a, you know, the day opens here and closes here. So if you sold an iron condo at this point, you would still make money for as long as the price does not move all the way up and the price does not move all the way down. You're trying to protect the short leg. The short leg is your money maker and it is also your money loser. Once it gets penetrated in a condo, then your recourse here is to uh, you know, close that position that is threatened let the one that is not threatened uh, remain. So you can break your condo. This is about the only time, well, one of the few times that I would suggest breaking your vertical and manipulating one side at a time. But notice the iron condo, and there's a lot more you know, to go into, an, in, into a condo. It's a four-legged strategy. A lot of you are not even comfortable with a one-leg strategy, leave alone the two. So the iron condo is a four-leg strategy. Right. It could also be, you could also add more legs to it, but that but that becomes, or you could manipulate the those four legs to where the width of the spread is not equal. That would make it an iron fly. Right. And then if you again separate the distance between the short legs in the middle, then you make it into a butterfly, you adjust the wings. Uh, so it could go into a butterfly or a broken wing butterfly. This it's it's more advanced strategy. My point here is if you don't understand the the, the puts and the calls and the credit spreads, you're gonna have a lot of hard, you're gonna have a hard time understanding and working with condos. And notice with condos, we almost always sell them, we never buy them. Uh, Jacqueline, do you ever buy your condos or do you only sell them? No, and see, that's what I was, um, what what I was saying is that I'm just trying to learn how to do them, and I've been playing in my sim, you yeah. know, just to, you know, just to, you know, try to figure out exactly, you know, how they work, you know. Uh, they they may be worth it. They have a use case. You have to understand the use case very very specifically and understand the market uh, direction and a few more things than simple momentum. When it comes to iron condos, you you need a you need more information than your regular trader, and you need more uh, you need more things to happen, not just watching the momentum one way or another. Right. So, okay. So the one that I did do, um, uh, you know, I brought time on it, and um, when I went back to check it, and I I found out I don't like them. <laughs> Well, well, you did. Well, first off, you bought time. You sold time, right? Yeah. Wrong thing. You don't sell time on that. 
Well, it's a, it's a credit strategy. You want the shortest DTE on that. But see, that's the thing. I didn't sell it. I brought it. Oh, you so, bought it. Yeah. Right. Oof, right. You, so I'm listening to you and I was like, oh, so that's what I did wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you right off the bat, you, you did the wrong thing. You bought it instead of right. sold, selling it. So with Ion Condors, you... If I were to teach you this, I wouldn't teach you to buy condos. I'd, I'd teach you to sell condos, right? Or flies. You, you never buy them. You can buy them back to close. That's the intention. But to get into the trade, we don't want to buy. We don't want to spend money. We want to be paid up front. And right. then we have the conditions necessary to you know, buy them back or let them expire. Rarely do we want to let them expire. Instead, we want to buy them back. And there are strategies that we want to be in for about 30 to 45 minutes. Longer than that, you're losing money. Guaranteed. Okay. Okay. And that was the other thing. Yeah. Um, yes, I did lose money on it. Yep. Praise, you know, thank God it was in my stamp. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found out about the fly. I'm like, there's a fly also? <laughs> Yes, the iron fly. So I'd rather do an iron fly than an even iron condor. But you know, and I don't want to go too far in advanced strategies in this session because the the demographic of this session is, I, I know people are still at the call sports level, verticals level, and so this advanced strategies that 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 I actually have traded quite a bit. I've traded more flies than condor. I've probably done one condor, right? But I've done more iron flies than iron condors. And I've done more short butterflies than iron condors. I, I don't see much reason for doing iron condors anyway. So yeah. my advice for you is, yes, do learn them. Pick one strategy. See how it makes money. You do understand also that an iron fly requires more capital. There's more risk. And there's also a defined profit, usually very small. But it's very, you know, it's usually assured in about 30 or 45 minutes if things are going for you. And you also need to understand how do you lose money? That's the most important point. Mm -hmm. Your exit strategy, how do you lose money? And then you avoid that. Because with an iron fly, it will pay you. It will pay you quick. And if you don't take that profit, you're going to give it back. If you're not out of the trade in about 45 minutes or now, it's a volatility trade for those who are wondering why is it such a short trade so it's a volatility trade you're getting you're using high volatility you're using vega to calculate your exits and when that point is reached you get out you don't pass go you get out mm -hmm. so maybe maybe again uh this was jacqueline yeah jacqueline jacqueline talk to me uh, you know later on let's see how we can help each other on this one okay cool well do. All, right. all right thank you you're welcome. And then uh, for straddles and strangles, uh, she did not know the difference between a strangle and a straddle. Let me real quick. I just know you can straddle and strangle the other one. Just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's see. Saturday. You got jokes. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And you're, I love jokes. You know that, right? Uh. So what's a strangle? What's a straddle? Straddle mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, exactly what it says. You're straddling both sides of the aisle, assuming this is the aisle, mm -hmm. right? So a straddle, and if you're selling, actually, you'd be buying. You wouldn't be selling a straddle. You'd be buying a straddle. So I'd be clicking on the ask side on both sides. So for instance, if I decide 38.50 was my pin, again, that's terminology that we need to understand what that means. I would also be buying the... Uh, 3850 put right so you can see my strato you see that my strato i'm buying i'm going along on both 3850 call and put that's a strato mm -hmm. there's a particular use case for that uh, i'm not going to go into it just yet you could also do a strangle and by the way notice that i was at the money right at the money on my strato for my strangle, I'm going to go a little bit out of the money. I don't usually advocate going out of the money, but this is one strategy that requires you to go out of the money. So maybe I'm going to pick a Delta 20, right? I'm going to pick a Delta 20 here mm -hmm. on the call side. I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to find a Delta 20 and I'm going to buy that. And now it becomes a strangle. They're both on both sides of the aisle, calls and puts. But it's a strangle. This time, the difference is that they are not the same strike. Notice also that right. 
it's much cheaper. The other one was about $40. This one's about $11.65. Different strategies, different ways to make money on this. This is probably, it does make money, but it is not the smartest way to make money. In my book of options, this would be the last strategy that I would advise anyone to take. So cancer strangles. Yeah, this don't strangle. Yeah, just strangle it. Yeah, don't strangle. You can do, yeah, do you can do stratos, right? Okay. And there's a there's a there's a great case for stratos. Do you know when that's that is? No, it it costs more, doesn't it? It does cost more. It costs more. That's what I. That's what right. I. I see. Yeah. You need. You need to talk to me and see what 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 that use case is for Stratos. So. Okay. So so you don't use the um what is it the drop down and just choose Strato. You do your own. Oh, you you can. Okay. You, yeah. You you can you can do that Strato Strango. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this that's the easier way to do it. But if you understand the principle, then you know which strikes you need to pick. Pick okay, right. Yes. Okay. So there's, there's that information that's additional, that, uh, that, that knowledge that you need in order to, you know, simply look at an options chain and decide this is where I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to learn more, okay. you know, about the, you know, the additional um, strategies that are out there versus using the same ones all the time. You know, I'm, I'm more of a, an adventurous, you know, I like to venture out you know, yeah, uh, far beyond what I currently already know. So, yeah, just want to know a little bit more about. It. There's definitely value in knowing it uh, and learning it. There's probably if you if you click on spread here, mm -hmm. there are so many strategies mm -hmm. that we could learn that you know double diagonals and and balance butterflies, you know deep and wides. Uh, all of that, this you can drill deep into these, but they all use the same underlying fundamentals of calls and puts and credit and debit spreads. Those are the fundamentals. And that's why a lot of people just stick with call, I mean, uh, credit spreads, debit spreads, calls and puts, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe, and maybe str uh, stratos. So uh jennifer says that she tries yeah you can do you can definitely do stratos to trade on earnings that's a great use case for that mm. right another, another use case is when fomc is in play you, you can use a strato there's you have to buy it at a specific time otherwise you buy it on the day off you're not making money so so that's what jennifer's iphone says there okay. but uh, but she's right she she's uh seems to be on the right track on that all right. What other questions do I have? Let's see. Hey, hey. Thanks again, uh, Jaffney, for thank you putting yourself on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. I like. I like challenge. I like. I like challenge. So, uh, do we have any so other questions? I. Anybody have uh, other questions? Uh, Mary, thanks for putting out that link. Options with Eddie.com. That is where you find out how to join my tribe. And uh, the next class is January 9th, in case you missed that conversation, January 9th, it's a Monday. Okay. Uh, and there'll be more classes, not just January 9th. The ones that are full, I don't advertise. And I take 10 students per class, that's it. 10 students, thank you. All right, I don't see any other questions. So that might mean that you're all saturated up. Is this such a word? <laughs> I just I just made a new word. You're all saturated up. All right. Cool. I don't see other questions. I'm, I'm scrolling up and down the chat, by the way. So I am your trading whisper. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Thank you. So let's step back for a minute, um, Eddie. I'm sorry. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. um, just recap on on uh, on what you uh, stated today is that so you don't trade off the open. You wait oh. until ten ten thirty in the uh, morning, right? Uh, no, I trade at nine twenty nine. <laughs> Come on. 
What are you talking about? I know okay. what I'm doing at 9 30. <laughs> all right. I'm just trying to give me a couple of more hours worth of sleep. You know no, what I mean? You, you do you, you do need that. So okay. let, let me let me explain what I'm what I just said. Okay. If if you're a day trader, you're trading at 9 30. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, if you're a swing trader, you really don't need to be trading at 9 30. For me, I'm usually out of the market before 10 o'clock because my strategies all happen in the morning. In fact, my trading plan says by 10 30, I have no business being in the market. If I'm still in a trade at 9 30, at 10 30, I'm, I'm usually sorting bullets, something. You know, I'm trying to recover. I'm trying to do something. Not so much anymore. Now I trade less, but I get better results. The, the difference is, do you have a plan for whatever strategy it is that you're taking? Do you, do you have that plan? And can you stick to it? Have you tested it over and over and over again? And you want to do that. So for me, I trade early in the morning. I'm a day trader. I don't hold positions overnight unless... Uh, well, for those that I hold overnight, I have a separate account for those and they're very, very specific strategy. So uh, Mary says that she, she's in this class and uh, she has doubled her account. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I get all those kind of uh, kudos every, you know, every, off, every so often. So uh, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of trader you are, you like flies, right? If you're trading flies, iron flies and butterflies, you're a morning trader. You're not a 10.30 trader. 10.30, you've missed the mark completely. Right? Well, I trade uh, calls, puts, and debit spreads. Those you can do anytime. Right. But for the more advanced strategies of iron flies and butterflies, mm -hmm. those are early morning strategies. Right, so it means at 9.31, 9.35, you need to be inside of a trade. 9.47, you need to be out of the trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so does that help clarify your answer? So yes. it's not, so it's not, well, I don't want people to day trade when they don't know what they're doing because that's what's losing money the most. You know, when you're trying to do, you know, run strategies that, that are supposed to be taking longer, but you're trading them like, uh, what do I say? It's like trying to, uh, Jacqueline, it's like trying to take your Ferrari to go check the mail. I know what you're talking about, Eddie. I yeah. mean, you know, I've been following you for, from the other world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know exactly what you're talking uh, about. That's why I, 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 <laughs> continue to stick under you because i know i know, you know <laughs> well, well thank you thank you no problem <laughs> uh lauren wants to know can i assure you success with my instruction uh, no no <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't guarantee anything <laughs> just to be clear just to be clear lauren uh I do have a very high success rate. And when I say I, I mean my students have a very, very high success rate. But I don't guarantee that. Let's make no mistake. I am I am merely a motor person. I I just I just instruct. I'm I think I can teach. I, th I think I can teach. Uh, that that much I can say. Uh, you are going to be doing the work, not me. Right, you're going to be doing the work. I will simply give you the instruction. I will give you the fundamentals. I will lead you down. I will hold your hand. I will be with you. And by the way, I trade live with, with my students on Thursday mornings. That's part of the deal. So guaranteeing success or assuring success is a very, very tall order. So I don't want to give the impression that you join my class immediately, you're a success story. That is not true. Uh, the truth is, you will get stuff that you don't get anywhere in public school, especially that public school. Jacqueline, you know what I'm talking about, right? But that's not my benchmark for success. He makes, he makes you think, and that's what I love about you. You know, it's yeah. not you, 
you know, doing the work. You make us do the work, you know, and make us think about what we're doing, you know, before we actually do it. And that's why I continue to follow you because. Absolutely. I'll I, 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 and, I'll, and I'll help you think through that. that, that that's my job as a teacher to help exactly. to, to open up those avenues and, and show you the possibilities, work with you. Even when you're learning math, you don't just get the formula, you get instruction about this is how we came to the formula, right? For calculating the third side of that, you know, triangle. And this is this is why it works. Right. And then you understand the concept. How do you, you know, calculate the circumference of, of, of something or, uh, you know, whatever with that problem that you're trying to solve? I love math, by the way. So I have found that it works much better when there is interaction from the students. So one of the policies in my class is you can stop me at any time. Right. You can give me, you can stop me at any time. You can, uh, and, and I encourage it. That's how I know that uh, it's getting to you. That's how I know that I'm pushing the buttons because you need to be responsive. You need to be to, to be making those decisions. Remember, I'm trying to help you build a confidence. When you, be, when you build your trade, you understand why it should work, why it is working. I want to make you the person that people go to when they're looking for a trade. Right, Jackie? Jacqueline and Jackie? Both of you are next to each other on my on my screen. Jacqueline. <laughs> I prefer, yeah. The, 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 there's Jacqueline, true. yeah, yeah. And, there's, and there's yeah. Jackie Harris. Mm -hmm. well, he did that in our in my past life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, but yeah, I've got you, some great students. Uh, all of you are yeah. great. At least uh, I can say that I have. I'm yet to meet. I'm yet to meet a dumb student. Is there such a person as a dumb student? There's there's no such thing, right? Everyone has potential. You've taken the first step. You've decided that this is something that you want to learn. Uh, why you chose to do it in eight weeks instead of in university, I have no idea because this is a university class that you are trying to do in about eight weeks. <laughs> Beverly, right? Looking at you, Beverly. So uh, you get it. Let's see. Ryan, this, will I catch up with all the... All the comments, I'm going to have to read some, just some of them. I want to earn more money. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, what Steven said, gives, give you, you have access to me. That's, that's a big deal. I think that's a huge deal. When I was learning this stuff, uh, there's not that many people who can find time for you and that's a problem because your problem is right here right now i need to know what is it that this trade is doing why is it behaving the way it is i don't understand it i'm sure something is happening but what's going on and you need somebody on your back you need someone to help you understand or break down you know the you know the chat or break down the platform maybe i don't know uh Talking about platform, do you need uh, Think or Swim? No, you don't need Think or Swim. You can you can use uh, anything that you want. Uh, Trade Station, Webull, Robinhood, maybe I don't know. Is Robinhood a still thing? You know what? I have a Robinhood account. I don't know, no money, but uh, still there. But I think they've uh, I've heard that they've introduced some options. But but the idea here is that uh, I've got your six. If you understand what that means, I've got your back, right? I've got your back, meaning that uh, we we have a forum. Yes, we do trade live, uh, and we also meet once a week, every other week on Thursday nights. That's and you don't have to pay extra for that, by the way. Uh, and there's an alumni, huge alumni growing. So enough about me. What what are your questions? A few more questions and then we can head out. What's the best class for beginner? Uh, best class for beginner is uh, we'll need to talk. We'll need to talk. So how how do I decide what class to put you in? There's a short 
meeting that you and I will have to go through, almost every student, and I decide based on your answers, it's not a pass or fail, but I evaluate where you're coming from. And I want to put you in a class that has got similar skilled students. So whether you're a beginner or whether you are, you know, advanced, then, uh, you know, you get, you get to be in the right class. So. And then there are people who tell me that they know everything about options and I give them a quiz and they're like, dude, man, I can't do this. <laughs> we need to start, start a little further. So uh, I do level set the class before we begin and make sure that no one is left behind. That's the whole purpose of making it 10 students or less. That way you build some uh, you know, rapport amongst, the, amongst each other and you all go at the same pace. All right, cool. All right, guys, it is Saturday. It's 12.45 p.m. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you like these, go ahead and uh, hit that like button at the bottom. That's what YouTube is telling us. <laughs> it's all so funny. <laughs> Smash that button. Like, love, subscribe. And we'll help you out. This is Eddie. Have a great Saturday. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Thank you, everyone.